Hey, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. In this video, I want to talk about what I consider seven magic words to overcome any hiring objection and help you land the IT job that you're after. And especially, these are especially important for IT positions. Now, these seven words aren't my seven words. They came from an interview I recently did with a guy by the name of Mike P. And his story is very interesting. He was in town the other day and I really wanted to lock him down and get an hour, uh, an interview with him. And I did an hour long interview with him and his story is interesting because it was only three years ago that he was a broke college student <laughs> three years into his CS degree. He was working at a factory because he was married and had five kids and was really frustrated, really thought that his life was meant for more <laughs> than what he was doing wasn't making the kind of money he wanted to make, wasn't doing things that he felt had significance, and was really just kind of frustrated and struggling. A, a position I think a lot of us have been at in our life, maybe you're at now, and can really relate to. And then in the span of three years, he's gone from that to now being a senior consultant, making six figures, working with huge brands, like uh, well, I can't name the brands, he's asked me not to name the brands, but Ones that you'll see, well, there's one right down the road from me here. Ones you'll see all over the place you would recognize. Huge, huge companies. Uh, and working for one of Fortune's 500 fastest growing companies. And somebody that he th his company really, really relies on is often the lead or very integral in the projects that they're, they're doing. So his transformation has been very, very quick. And so obviously I wanted to know what he's done to be able to do that, what his thinking and what is what's going on inside his mind and really kind of try to, to, to pick his brain and give you guys the tips and, and so forth to help you both get the confidence and then navigate your career. So hopefully you can make the same kind of transition in your life or move up as quickly as he had. Well, as a part of that interview, he said in one segment, seven, the seven word phrase that really stuck out to me because it strikes me as really the key mindset to have to, again, both deal with confidence issues on your own, but also communicate to the people, whether they're interviewing you, whether you're hired and it's a project manager and you're trying to move up quickly to communicate to them that you're really on board and to overcome any sort of objection that they might have about your skill set. And so I, I, I wanted to cut out this eight to nine minute segment where he lays the groundwork for this seven word phrase and, and really re lays out the, the, the thinking behind it and why it's so powerful. So that's what I've done. That's what we're going to, we're going to jump to that here in a second. And, and I'm not going to tell you what the phrase is because I want you to hear what he has to say and how he lays it out and, and then what the phrase ultimately is. But before I do that, I know a lot of you probably ask, where can you get the full hour interview that I did with him? That's available for supporting listeners on Patreon at the exclusive courses level. So you can go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon to learn more about that. Or you can get it as a part of my PHP 101 course. It's now a bonus that's available there. And you can learn more about that at johnmorrisonline.com slash PHP. All right, so we're going to cut over to the segment. I'll come back. I have some thoughts that I don't want to share about what he said. Uh, and then I have some announcements that I want to make. All right, let's jump to the segment you got hired at IBM as a Java application developer. Mm -hmm. How much Java would you say you knew at that point? I had just taken a class on it at school. So, you know, maybe eight weeks worth of reading through a book and doing eight assignments and maybe reading up on, uh, like the state of Java in terms of where it's at in the enterprise world. How you know, many, how many Java applications had you written at that point? Zero. How many job applications have you written to date so far? Today? Zero. zero. <laughs> Interesting. So, I mean, and I, I don't, I'm not trying to <laughs> demean or anything, but it, it's interesting because I think a lot of developers think that they have to be the master coder. They have to know everything. Now, eight weeks at, at, at college is, it's not nothing. Right. But, you know, having been in the tech industry for 
over 11 years now, you know, I know, and you having been in a few years now, know that eight weeks, especially, you know, if you're not, not every day of those eight weeks is spent coding, actually coding in the language, it's not a super deep knowledge. It's no. it's a kind of a cursory right. knowledge. Yet, you were still able to get hired. Right. So, uh, maybe you can, maybe you ha- share your thoughts on this notion that you have to be this super genius coder in order to get hired. I... So if if my view is that if you're looking for a senior level position, yes, you're going to have to know how to do uh, well, co- complex technical things, right? Sure, sure. But I guess what what I'm what I'm specifically talking to, I don't mean to cut you off, but a lot of the people that I think would be listening to this would be people who are in another job in a different industry right. that they don't like and they simply want that, out. Yeah. So that's why that's why I say specifically senior level position because if you're looking for a senior level position you've been in the industry to a certain extent to understand a a deeper aspect of the technology as well as how projects run in general but if you're not that understand that you're essentially entry level right Mm -hmm. that's where you're entering into this um this world from so I, I say I say that to say, if you're not senior, you know that. So don't expect that. Look for jobs that are not senior. You know, mm-hmm. go for those jobs where you know you can fit into, and then at that point, all you have to have is a basic understanding. The but the key thing, the thing, because I've taken on a role of mentoring junior level developers, right? So the thing I look for is not deep technical knowledge. I look for an aptitude of learning quickly and a willingness to learn themselves, right? Because if I have to spend my time teaching someone everything that they need to know, I, I, it, I'm, I'm going to do it myself. I'm not going to spend the time teaching someone everything. I just do it myself. So it sounds like, sounds like maybe what you're saying that for someone... Uh, who's in a position where they're not in a tech industry and right? maybe they're, you know, in a corporate job or maybe they're in some service job or whatever, and they want to get out of that. They have mm-hmm. a job that they really don't like and they want to get out of that. They're interested in technology and they want to get into technology that what's important for someone applying for an entry level position like that, who, you know, a lot of people, you, you find a lot of entry-level positions in the tech field are comparable to maybe some higher-level salary-wise jobs in other industries. Absolutely. So they could switch over to an entry-level job and make it the, the same or maybe even more, more than where they're at now. Right. But what, what, what's important isn't the skill set necessarily, but the personality, the mentality. It's the other things reliability, yep. uh, work ethic, yep. all the things that you would normally think of in any other job. But for some reason, when we get into the tech industry, people tend to think that all that matters is the skill set. Yeah. No, let me give you an example. So if someone, if I'm, if I'm mentoring, say, two different people, I give them the same thing. Let's say I, I give them a piece of SQL and it, is maybe 30 lines long. There's a s- several subqueries with some joins. And I say here, this is this can be used to do to pull this data out in such a way and have it structured in a certain format. Take it, go do with it, and come back to me with what you got. If a month later, one comes back to me and says, now what is this again for? And the other comes back to me and says, hey, I noticed that doing this, it does this, and it comes out with this result. And if I change this over here, it does this thing. The person who comes back to me and says, hey, I'm this. I, can you tell me what this does again? I'm going to be like, okay, it looks like um, you didn't really run this. You didn't study what needs to be studied. Not really applying your thinking to this code. Whereas the other person, if they come back to me saying asking question, questions 
into the deeper aspects of it, telling me what they what they tested, what they experimented with. I'm going to go with that person and say, I'm going to spend my time teaching this person things mm-hmm. because that person is the person who, who can, I can give them something small. They're going to take it and expand on it and come back with questions that are going to deepen their thinking. So that that's what I mean when I say, if I, if I have to spend all my time teaching someone everything, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I will help to guide someone's thinking about it, but they have to take the own, their initiative and go and run with it. And the people who are more willing to do that, I'm more willing to spend the time with to say, hey, this is kind of where it's doing. This is where it's at. This is how, how you can shape it, form it, all that kind of stuff. Though that willingness and the aptitude to be self uh, managing, like that really is the biggest piece. And that's everybody that I work with and everybody that I talk to about this specific thing. That's, that's the key thing they look for. I remember my first project manager that I got onto working for a fortune five, I was on a project and the project was for a, at that time they were in the top, the fortune 20, right? So they're a high level tech company with billions of dollars of revenue. This was my first project and I was doing, I was the lead as a data migration. And this was the first time I'd done data migration. And he, my project manager, um, I was actually QA lead at the time. And he said, Hey, data migration person left. Do you want to do this? And I was like, uh, yeah, sure. Why not? And like two or three weeks later, he was talking to me about that and how I, how I just answered it and said, yes. And I said, the way I feel is that I don't necessarily know everything about data migration. At that time, I didn't. I do now. So I like to think. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't know anything. I had like an hour introduction to it with this specific system. And um, I told him at that time and I said, I don't know, but I will learn. I will figure it out. Right. So that that's just the way I approach things. And he said back to me at that time, yeah, that's those are the type of people that I look for as a project manager to bring onto my project. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't care if you don't know this thing. I care that if you are willing to learn it and go after and get it done. So this is a this is a project manager who's been working at IBM for years on several high level projects. Like this is what he's saying to me. He looks for people who have the willingness to learn what they need to learn to figure it out, to dive in and go. So like you can take that for what you will, but that's just kind of the nature of this industry is yeah. you have to figure things out. All right, John, back here. So, so interesting. Now, I want to make sure that you you were able to pluck out the phrase that he said that I think are the seven magic words that you can use in many different situations. So, the phrase that he kind of highlighted there was, "I don't know, but I will learn," and that to me is what marks. That's what marks you as a developer is taking on that mentality, really owning that mentality. When you say and you believe and you really live up to the idea that I don't know, but I will learn, that is what separates you from everybody else who doesn't think of themselves or count as a developer. Because if you listen a lot of times to what the clients that you work with or maybe family and friends who aren't into tech will say when you talk about this tech stuff, they'll say things like, oh, I'm, I'm not smart enough for that or I don't want to do that or, or whatever. They, they have this belief that they're not smart enough to do it, that they, they don't take on the idea that they, yeah, they may not know, but they will learn it and they will be able to learn it. So it's this mentality that really separates you and sets you apart as a developer and also should be the thing that you latch onto when you are feeling doubtful about whether or not you can apply for a tech position, whether or not you have the skill set. The truth is, especially for entry level jobs, the company hiring you knows they're going to have to train you. They know that you're probably not going to have the full skill set thereafter. And if they only p- hired people that did, they would be critically short of people. So 
someone who comes in and says, you know what, I don't necessarily have all of the skills, but I'm committed to learning them. That's what they're after. That's what they really want. And then as you get hired, as Mike P mentioned, what he looks for and the people that he works with, he mentors and and he has work on projects with him is someone who will take on that same mentality of curiosity, of, of learning, of of looking at something and not expecting someone else to give them the answer. So to me, that that seven word phrase, both for you internally and externally, when you're applying for jobs, when you're trying to get on projects at whatever company you work at, that's the mentality to have. That's the phrase to use. I don't know. If you don't know, say you don't know, but I will learn it. I will figure it out. And again, you know, having talked with Mike as much as I have, I know that that's his, that's his core, core thinking about everything that he does. And it's been one of the primary reasons why he's been able to move up as quickly as he has is taking on that mentality of, I don't know, but I will learn. Now, obviously that was a eight to nine minute segment of the full hour interview that I did with him. And there were a ton of really good nuggets in there. In fact, I posted it on Patreon a few days ago and I've already had several people commenting saying, thank you so much for this interview. This was really, really helpful. They loved it. So people are really getting a lot of value out of the full hour interview uh, and enjoying it. And so if you want access to that full hour interview, as I mentioned earlier, you can get access to it as a supporting listener over on Patreon at the exclusive courses level, johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. Not only do you get access to this interview, you get access to my ongoing Ace the Interview series that I'm in the middle of right now. You'll get access to my PHP 101 course. You'll get access to my Lightning Responsive course, which I released a few years ago. And you'll get access at that level to all of the source code that I've I've ever produced and have available. And a number of other things, I, I often just release things over there for patrons. So tons and tons of stuff that you're going to get over there on Patreon. If you're not comfortable and don't want to do that, you can also get access to it at johnmorrisonline.com slash PHP. That's my PHP 101 course. And I've included the interview, the full hour interview as a bonus for that course. So you can also get it there. All right. As I've mentioned in the past before, I'm doing full length podcasts over on, uh, for Android and iOS. So if you're only subscribed here on the YouTube channel, then you're missing out on really the bulk of the content that I'm putting out. I'm putting out two episodes per week, usually about 45 minutes to an hour. And those are only available on iOS devices at johnmorrisonline.com slash iTunes, Android devices at johnmorrisonline.com slash Android, and on SoundCloud at johnmorrisonline.com slash SoundCloud. So I highly recommend you get over there and subscribe so you don't miss any of those episodes. All right, that'll do it for this video. If you like this video, be sure to like it so they know that you like this kind of content. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing these seven magic words, I'd appreciate if you'd share it with them. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you next time.